Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Roaming Road. I'm David Dildine. And you know, one of the great truths that we learn in Scripture is the power of a testimony. It's, it's one of the things that we see throughout Scripture in such an amazing way that the people that, uh, whether they are well-educated in Scripture or not, they, people that have testimonies are the people that really change lives and have changed the world. We see that as Jesus heals a blind man and the Pharisees come to him and question him and they say, is Jesus, is this man a sinner? Is he, is he the son of God? And he says, whether he's a sinner or not, I do not know. But this I do know, that I was once blind and, and now I see. One of the exciting things about this show is that I get to bring on a lot of really good friends that I know their walk with the Lord. I know how strong they are in in their relationship with God, and I get to bring them on and have them give their testimony and talk about what God has done in their life. And today, I've got my very good friend, John Lyons, here. John, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dave. It's a and blessing to be here. I'm, I'm really excited to have you on the show and to find out uh, a lot of things. I know God has done amazing things throughout much of your life, well, all of your life. All but, of my life, uh, yeah. Uh, but really done some very poignant things that are very powerful that I think can help a lot of other people as well. So yeah. he's used to you. John is uh, a member of, of the Black Sheep, yeah. the Black Sheep Harley Davidson's for, for Christ. Christ. And uh, he's a uh, member there, good friend of mine, great motorcycle rider. In fact, um, we got a couple of shots of you, uh, one of your bikes. And can we do, uh, there we are. There's Don't show them. John, and, <laughs> John and Vicky there with their little trailer. Where are you traveling in that one? That one we're up by uh, Sturgis. Up by Sturgis. Yeah. And then John again on one of his other bikes. I that love was, this bike. That was after I bought it. That was the same bike that you saw with the trailer. Okay. So this is when it was newer, when I was single. All right. A couple of nice so, little bikes there. Well, yeah. hey, same bike, but Same bike, nice. but different uh, miles. <laughs> you just did one with, uh, with a sidecar as well, right? Sa that's the same bike. I okay, put so a, you put that sidecar yeah, on that Yeah, we put a sidecar on that. It All right, ninety thousand miles on it, you know. Great way to travel, right? Beautiful way to travel. You get the, you're there on the highway, free, relaxed. After you get out of the city, and uh, you're able just to to talk with the Lord and uh, just see His beauty firsthand, right beside you, right below you. You know, it's completely different than riding in a car. So that's that's why we really like riding, and and because it does, it puts us kind of in. A little more communication. We don't feel as as isolated. It's you're out there in the world, and and I think the same thing is true about us as Christians on on the road of life. You know, yes. the roaming road we're talking about. No matter where you are on the road of life, God is there with you. Yes. And there's so many illustrations that we learn from motorcycle riding that apply to our spiritual lives daily. Absolutely. Um, now, tell me a little bit about about your walk. You've God's done so many things in your oh, life that uh, go I'm only back. here today because of the Lord. Uh, <clears throat> from youth to on, I accepted, uh, well, I didn't understand it at age 11 in 1958, 59, when uh, I went to a Billy Graham uh, at the Coliseum and I saw him. And the friend that was with me and his family were a Christian family, I not being raised that way. I accept we went forward all the way from the top of the Colosseum down to accept the Lord and didn't realize what I did or had done. <clears throat> so through my life, uh, drinking drugs, uh, to my, through my first marriage that uh, separated, high school marriage, had two beautiful children out of it, uh, and then to my divorce through there, and then my years of few years of separation uh, before I met my second wife. And that's what I want to share today, uh, how that came about. Uh, through the first divorce I took tragically and, you know, it was personally, etc. cetera. But uh, I became, through my experiences of drinking, drugs, uh, mostly alcohol, becoming a bartender, the story that stuck in my mind this morning was there was an a elderly man, it was probably my age at the time, 
when I was tending bar in a little uh, bar in Lakewood, California. And this gentleman would come in every Thursday night between the hours of 6.30 to 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And every Thursday night, he'd come in. After I first met him, he explained to me how he wanted his drink mixed. And it had to have been a tumbler glass. It had to been packed with ice. And it had to have been filled with Grand Scotch. And he would drink two of those. And then he'd pull out his wallet. And he goes, John, did I ever tell you about my wife? Did I ever show you my wife? And I'm, no, you haven't. Well, let me tell you. And he starts to tell me a story, and he breaks down about losing his wife. And then he had one more after that, because he had three every time he came in. And then he'd take his wallet, put the picture back in his wallet after his third drink, and walk out, and said, I'll see you later. And this went on for several months. But same time, same place, same thing. <clears throat> Finally, I had realized a little bit what was going on, and I'm going, Lord, boy, I hope I never live like that or have to go through that. So I met my second wife through a friend of mine in the same bar I was tending bar, uh, through our relationship and then our marriage. In 1981, her and I were baptized, rededicated myself. She was Catholic. She conformed to uh, Christianity. And her and I were baptized in 1981. So during the course of those years, we had been together 32 years, married 28 of that. Uh, tragically, I had my, I mean, God had blessed us after that. Of course, the way Satan works in people's lives with myself, I was trying to, with Satan destroying my marriage. Uh, but the thing that I loved about this woman is she was so faithful to the Lord. Wow. Through everything that I put her through mm -hmm. for the first 15 years of our marriage, uh, she stood right there, faithful in the Lord, that he's gonna, it's going to be all right. He's going to get us through it, through it. So I started my own business uh, together with a, a partner back in uh, 2000 year was 2000. Uh, that ended up going well. The first three years, we were doing fantastic. And then the, do the dollar, the Deutschmark changed, kind of lost my profitability from importing overseas. So that business started to go down. At the same time, I believe it was, if I remember right, it was about August of uh, 2006, 2005. My wife was having pain in her breast. So went to the doctor, had her checked out. They came back and said, no, don't worry. It, basically, it's the same thing that you always have. It's just a nodule, you know, it's non-malignant. Don't worry about it. Well, went through August, September, towards the end of, I believe it was 2006, if my years are right, which I'm sure I am. Uh, she's having more pain, but then, her underarms and stuff were hurting. Went back to the doctor. Uh, during that time, that biopsy came back, and it ended up to where she had breast cancer. Wow. But it had transferred, it had already metastasized into her system. So she had, was infected with 19 lymph nodes. Uh, so tragically, uh, having to come to grips with that, the word cancer in people, right. and faith in God, don't worry about it. The Lord says he'll answer our prayers. We're not going to worry about this, you know, trying to keep it positive. Well, during the course of two and a half, three years of her going through chemo and trying this chemo and trying this chemo and then radiation, uh, the cancer had spread. Uh, throughout her body. Hmm. So in, uh, I remember her and I were going to the doctor and she had pain in one of her legs uh, that just continued to be worse. And I said, Cheryl, did you, have you talked to the doctor about this? Have you mentioned it? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I, I tell him all the time when I go in there. And I said, are you sure? 
I said, because it doesn't seem, and she kept saying, oh, it's, you know, neuropathy. Right. You know, I said, well, that's not how I read that neuropathy works. So I go to the doctor with her, and I tell the doctor about it. The doctor checks it out, uh, sends us home. He says he'll check it out, go from there, come back. He does uh, some few more tests on her, as I recall, uh, sitting in the office. And I remember sitting there, and the doctor looks at us, and he says, I'm going to do a brain scan on her. And this was probably in mm, January, February, January, February of 2008. And we're going to do a brain scan and check, check out and see what we can do. I said, OK. So then we did the brain scan, another scan to see where her cancer was. Came back, fitted her for the radiation mask and stuff because they found one mass, et cetera. So, but things continually progressively get worse. And all the time, and it being the time of the church I was going to, that we had been going to since 1981, and the friends and the, the elder board and, and anointing with oil and all the things that the Lord, the Bible tells us to do, you know, in, in times like this. And you're giving it to God, and you know He's going to answer your prayer. And uh, so as time goes on, uh, we went back to the doctor, and the doctor sits there, and he comes back into the office after she had one of her uh, scans and uh, just looked at us and said, I'm sorry, guys. And I said, we mean sorry. And he says, still comes back. Uh, we're going to call a hospice because there's nothing else we can do. <clears throat> so I look at my wife, and she looks at me and says, okay. I said, we'll go home. He said, but I'll call you later. So dead silence because what do you say? You know, the, the woman that uh, the Lord's brought into your life that you tried to, you messed up part of that marriage with her. You know the fact that there's coming an end, but you know that there's that hope. Right. You've got that eternal hope that everything's going to be all right. So as we get home, I went back to my job. Uh, this, was, this was in about, oh, November of uh, 2008. Uh, and I told my job, I said, my wife's, her cancer spread. She's in stage four. There's nothing they can do. Uh, I've got to take a leave of absence, or you can fire me. It doesn't matter. But I got to stay home with her. Yeah. You know. So I was home with her for three months. She she passed away on uh, January seventeenth, two thousand nine. Uh, and the reason I'm, I'm sharing this story is because the Lord has allowed me to to do something that I thought I'd never be able to do yeah. as being a 24-7 caregiver. And for those that are out there that are dealing with the loss of a spouse, uh, I've been through loss of parents. I've been through loss of grandparents. But the loss of a spouse, you know, I just couldn't handle it. So she passed away, like I said, January 17, 2009. Uh, after that, I even told my pastor, who was a dear friend of mine for 20, 20 some years, and we were at the trunk of my car, and I look at him and I said, You tell me where God was, Mike. Tell me. Show me what you're talking about. I said, Because we did everything biblically, and you know, went down the line and stuff. And so I got in my car. Of course, my sorrow, my self pity, and then other things I was going through with the business at the time, I ended up losing everything. Uh, material stuff now I know is, is nothing but the loss of my wife of uh, 32 years, I consider it, uh, was devastating on me. Uh, I've pulled away from family. I pulled away from friends at church for 20-some years. Uh, hated God in my mind. I want nothing to do with God. Don't tell me he answered prayer. Don't even talk to me about it. 
And uh, one day, a uh, few months, a couple of months after that, because I was back at the bottle, I was back in my room, my dog, that was it, nothing. <clears throat> For some reason, I opened the Bible to, uh, and flipped it open. And when I flipped it open, I looked down, and it's like this passage just struck me in the face. And I'm looking, and I go, Lord's Prayer, this is how we should pray? Yeah, okay. And I looked at it again and read it. And Matthew 6, uh, I believe it's verses 9 through 13, if I'm correct, uh, pretty close. The Lord's Prayer. This is how, and he's, he, he's explained to us how we should pray. And our Father who art in heaven, thy will be done. And when I read that line right there, I stopped. Mm -hmm. I said, wait a second. And he goes, thy will be done. And it's like the Lord just hit me with a two by four. And I fell to my knees and, and just weeping in sorrow and apologizing for my action because of my self-centeredness of, I thought you would do everything for me. Mm -hmm. And reality is, thy will be done. And the hardest thing that I found out in Christianity is you think you're doing all this stuff, but the Lord's doing it through you and for you. And that changed my moment in life because I never thought I'd be married again. I never wanted a relationship again. I bought a motorcycle to get lost in the world and probably end up back on drugs or back in alcohol or fraternizing wherever. And during the course of doing that, I found black sheep, Hardy Davidson for Christ. And uh, it, what was neat was it was a man gentleman's name was Sherman. It's no longer a part of Black Sheep, but he was talking to my son-in-law about the Lord and about Black Sheep. And so he introduced me uh, to Black Sheep. And from that point on, I'm thinking, well, this, maybe this is where the Lord wants me. Mm -hmm. uh, and he led me to Black Sheep to be part of a chapter. And then during the course of that, through that time period of about four or five years, it was the fact that I wasn't going to get married, I don't want to get married, I understand the things I'm doing because I understand the Lord's never going to leave you or forsake you. Right. And I guess the main thing about it is he's not going to get you over the loss. Okay? Uh, you're not going to forget about it because that's a bond that he put together. But he will get us through it. And during the course of time, not totally understanding it, I met Vicki, who was the office manager, or still is the office manager at uh, Black Sheep. And during that building of friendship, as we always do, uh, as people do, uh, I l asked her to go for a ride with me one time, you know, out of the ordinary, just out of the blue. So we were going on a rally, and she wasn't, didn't have a ride, and I said, well, I've got an empty back seat on my bike if you trust me you know and she looks at me and says mm, I probably trust you and I said okay so we'll go but needless to say in a course period of time you know uh, coming leading up to it I'm thinking what have you done why are you doing this don't do it Vicky's having second thoughts as well and so she had come out of a troubled marriage for 20 years and during the course of the next several couple of years, her and I talking back and forth, and we, I was very matter-of-fact with her. I'd never find a woman that can love me the way my wife loved me, Cheryl. I can never love another woman, which is my fear, mm -hmm. uh, like I loved her. Mm -hmm. And she, Vicki was honest and open, and I understand, you know, and I don't know if I can trust another man, you know. Right. So we're putting this together slowly but surely, and over the period of the time, it was like the Lord has just taken these two individuals that come out of troubled things, and without us working at doing something, 
He's constantly working at putting it together to the day to where I finally looked at her one day and I went up there for lunch in the office. I left the office, started to pull away in my truck. She was walking towards the office and I rolled down the window and I said, Vicki. And she says, yeah. I said, have I asked you to marry me yet? And she goes, no. And I said, well, I just did. And then I rolled up my window and drove off, you know, romantic John. But uh, so we got married, uh, decided to get married, have our family, our daughters, my daughters, her son, uh, grandkids at the house uh, in a backyard wedding because our idea together was this is going to be our last marriage, okay? Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, and we want to put it together to show our children what a godly marriage should be. Because out of three marriages, or three marriages of peace, two marriages of peace, you should have learned something if you're listening to the Lord, what's good, what's bad, why you did this, what did that. So he's put it together. We got married uh, July 27th, 2014. We're going to be uh, married four years this coming year, 2018. And I thank the Lord today, each and every day, for the way he's blessed both of us. Uh, it's beyond anything I ever thought would happen. So it's at your lowest times in life. And I don't say this just to say it for people, but if you're struggling with a, a spouse, the death of a spouse, especially into the holidays, uh, holidays are hard enough sometimes with separation and divorce, which is like a losing a spouse. Uh, but if you're dealing with that, the best advice I can give you is stop, take a moment, give it to the Lord. If you have a relationship with him, give it to him and allow him to help you through it. If you don't have a relationship with him, find somebody that will help lead you into relationship. Because as sure as I'm sitting here with Dave and the years that we've come across each other and known each other, and as sure as I'm sitting here at 70 years old, remarried, knowing that the God's in control of our marriage because we put him first in our lives. I put Vicki second below the Lord. She does the same thing. And then it just works down to our children and, and so forth that he will get you through it. He may not get you over it, but he will get you through it in his timing, not ours. And I thank him daily for that. That's fantastic, John. Yeah. You know, it's such a great testimony, and, I, and thank you for sharing that. That is, and I know that that is uh, truly your life has shown God's grace and God's power in so much that he's done through you. And, you know, sometimes God will take us out of a bad situation like he took Anak, and other times it's more like Noah, where he actually takes us through a very difficult situation. And God is doing that. He's always got a plan. He's always got a purpose. And there are times that we think that it just, it's, the sun's never going to shine again. It's never going to, uh, life is, is not going to go on. This, is, this has got to be it. And, and yet God's preparing you for something even greater, something that, that he has planned, and he's, and he's got somebody else that he's planning on the other side. So yeah. that was like truly you, amazing. Like you said, if it, if it was up to me, my life would have been over after yeah. my wife's death. Yeah. <laughs> Lord has another plan. Exactly. That I had no idea. And I know it's a plan that Vicky had no idea, that our paths would ever cross the way they had. Yeah. And he just put it together. So, yeah. You know, God has a plan for your life as well. <laughs> No matter where you're at, no matter what part of the world you are in, whatever's going on in your life, you may be on a, on a mountaintop, you may be in the depths of despair, 
But you know what? God has a plan for you. He's created you for a specific purpose. And he wants to be a part of your life. He wants to be in a relationship with you. If you've never asked Christ into your heart, if you don't know that peace that John is talking about, then I invite you to just pray with us right now. All you have to do is just say, Dear Jesus, I realize, I confess that I am a sinner. I know that you have come and you have sacrificed yourself for my sin. I, I receive your sacrifice. I receive the gift of salvation. I ask that you come into my heart and save me, that I may spend eternity with you. Thank you, Father, for allowing me to be part of your family. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you are now have an eternal home. And Jesus is coming into your heart. Holy Spirit is filling you. And he's got a plan for you. And if you did pray that prayer, write to us here at the Roaming Road. We'd love to hear about it. And know that you are going to be with us in eternity. So... John, thank you for coming. I appreciate it. My and uh, really glad. It. What a great testimony. Oh, thank so you. thank you for, for being here. And for you out there, remember that on the roaming road, the road of life, no matter where you're at on it, God is already there, and God has a specific plan for you on that part of the road. Yes, so till next time, ride safe, and uh, God bless. <laughs>